Why are we living on Earth and not Venus or Mars? Of course, we can't make use of this opening sentence once Elon Musk gets us to Mars, but for now, Earth seems to be the planet we are stuck on, and where life as we know it has come about. But why is this the case? Does it have to do with Earth's abundance of water? Does it have to do with our temperature? Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to All About the Habitable Zone. So here's the answer. We happen to be in a comfortable position inside our solar system's habitable zone. This term might sound confusing, and it is, because what is meant by the habitable zone is unlike what it implies. Many media outlets and news sources have incorrectly characterized the habitable zone as somewhere life must develop and is very favorable to life. The actual definition of the habitable zone, however, is more accurately described as the surface liquid water zone, in more official terms, as the range of orbits around a star within which a planetary surface can support liquid water given sufficient atmospheric pressure. But why is the definition all about surface liquid water? Well, scientists believe that liquid water is essential for life to arise, thanks to its ability to dissolve many molecules and mix them in a variety of environments. These properties of water allow molecules to undergo reactions, grow, and become more complex. As liquid water is considered to be a prerequisite for life, we have focused our efforts and resources to finding planets where liquid water may exist in the search for extraterrestrial life. And this is where the habitable zone comes in. Thanks to recent advances in astronomy and technology, we have been able to observe not only stars, but planets orbiting them, known as exoplanets, and we have managed to figure out the distance at which the exoplanets orbit their host star, along with things such as planetary mass and density. Along with the information about the host star, we can figure out what the habitable zone is for these star systems, and whether some exoplanets are in the habitable zones. Ones that are discovered to be within the habitable zone usually makes the headlines, which was the case with the TRAPPIST-1 system. Now for the juicy part, what affects the habitable zone distances? Well, we can think of it this way. For surface liquid water to exist, the temperature of the planet must be relatively moderate. For the temperature of the planet to be just right, the energy or light that the planet receives must also be just right. And what affects the amount of light that the planet receives? Simple distance from the star. Have you ever woken up in the middle of the night because of the alarm or received a text message on your iPhone, and when you held the phone close to your face, the light blinded you? Our instinctual reaction is to hold the phone further away to reduce the intensity of light in our eyes, and it just so happens to be that there is a very neat physical law that shows us how the intensity of light decreases with increasing distance. Behold, the inverse square law generally written the form i equals 1 over d squared, where d equals distance and i equals intensity, it tells us that if we increase our distance from a light source by a factor of 2, the intensity drops off by a factor of 4. This applies to planets and stars as well. The farther away from the star you are, the less energy you receive. And the less energy you receive, it will be colder. So we take a look at the amount of flux, which is the total power output of the star, and see at what distances the power received by the planet will be just right, so that the temperatures on exoplanets will be sufficient to host surface liquid water. We take the distance at which the water on the surface will boil off completely in a runaway greenhouse effect, and call this the inner edge of the habitable zone, and we take the distance at which, even with greenhouse gases, it would be so cold that water would barely remain a liquid, and call this the outer edge. Venus just so happens to lie at the inner edge, Mars at the outer edge, and Earth snugly somewhere in the middle. But there are a host of other factors that can affect the habitable zone distances as well. Take the example of stellar temperature, for example. A stellar temperature is simply the temperature of a star, which may seem hard to imagine since, after all, we can hardly touch a star. But like fire, we can figure out how hot the star is from its color. Just as a blue flame is hotter than a red one, a blue star has a higher surface temperature than a red star. For a blue star, a lot of the light that it emits is blue. But as blue light is scattered back into space way more than other frequencies of light by the planet's atmosphere, the planet is kept cooler. On the other hand, for a red star, more of the light is absorbed by the atmosphere instead of being scattered back, and the planet is kept warm. The additional atmospheric scattering in the case for the blue stars will prevent a closer planet from getting too hot, and thus pulls in the boundaries of the habitable zone. Apart from this, the mass of the planet is another parameter that can determine whether a planet is in the habitable zone or not. The mass of the planet directly affects the surface gravity of the planet. 
higher surface gravity would mean that the atmosphere will feel more of a pull and would be squashed, and hence be thinner. Smaller atmospheric column depths would mean that there would be less effective greenhouse warming, meaning that it would take a lot more of the star's flux to induce a runaway greenhouse effect. What this does is that it will pull in the inner edge of the habitable zone. A smaller planet, on the other hand, with a thicker atmosphere and stronger greenhouse effect, will push out the inner edge of the habitable zone, and also its outer edge. Finally, we may wonder if planet rotation has anything to do with how habitable it is. It's not hard to imagine that how fast a planet spins would impact its cloud formation. For a slowly rotating or tidally locked planet, with one side always facing the star, continuous evaporation could generate clouds that can accumulate over the surface and actually help cool the planet down. Simply put, the cloud cover acts as a sun shield or umbrella. On the other hand, if the planet spins very fast, the Coriolis effect, along with strong and turbulent winds, could cause clouds to disperse too quickly, leaving no chance for accumulation. Temperature of this planet would be very hot indeed. In summary, slowly spinning or tidally locked planets that are effectively cooled by cloud cover will pull the inner edge of the habitable zone closer to the star, while rapidly rotating planets will push the inner edge of the habitable zone away from the star. And there you have it, pretty much the most important and mind-blowing facts about the habitable zone. Gaze up into the sky sometimes and wonder how amazing it is that we are here and are wondering about how we came to be. And with that, please feel free to share this video on various platforms. And as always, thanks for watching. Hey, cool worlds. So for our final project in our exoplanets and astrobiology class, we decided to create a video about the habitable zone and what it really is. My name is Elliot. I'm majoring in economics and environmental science. My name is Natalie, and I'm concentrating in business management and majoring in creative writing. I'm Ying Ying, and I major in applied math. So if you have any questions or feedback, please leave them in the comment section below. And as always, thank you for watching.